Hey, I'm here with a list of demands. Follow the show wherever you listen. Subscribe, share, like, and comment on the show on YouTube. Follow any and all of my social media as well. All of the links are in the description. And finally, if you're a real fan, which most of you aren't, head on over to buymeacoffee.com, use the link in my description, and buy me a goddamn coffee. It supports the show, which is me. So you're supporting me. Now that you've successfully ignored that, go ahead and enjoy today's episode. Good morning, everybody, and happy Labor Day. What a stupid fucking holiday. Like most of them, you guys know I am very anti-holiday, for the most part. For the most part, except for the ones I like. There's a couple I like. Um, but Labor Day is one of those ones that are just stupid. It's, uh, it's a day celebrating Americans who work. Isn't that most Americans? Isn't that all we're good for, is work and progress and production? Isn't that it? Why isn't every day, lab- every day is Labor Day? This is the opposite of Labor Day. Nobody's working. I'm working. I'll be at work. While you guys are listening to this at your cookout and your family is appalled at what, you're, at what they're hearing, I am actually going to be at work. I will be celebrating Labor Day the correct way. By working. Right? What sense, to, what kind of backward shit is this? You get the day off on Labor Day? This is a day where we celebrate the good, hard-working people of America, which supposedly has diminished. The amount of hard-working people has diminished because there's uh, tons of jobs that nobody wants. So Labor Day should be canceled. Labor Day, once 2020 came around... And COVID was the, all the rage. Crazy, that was two years ago. But once it was all the rage, you uh, <clears throat> Labor Day should have just gone out the window. I don't even know if Labor Day was a thing in during the pandemic. But after that, I mean, it shouldn't be a thing. We aren't concerned, as Americans, we aren't concerned with hard work in the workplace. Some of us are, but most of us aren't. Right, I spoke about it recently. Quiet quitting is literally a movement that has been born from the hatred of work and the work options that we have as Americans. And the, the, uh, the self-destroying cycle that has been created by the workplace in America. The whole, uh, I have to work to make money to live to work to make money to live. And it's just a big circle, right? It's just a big circle that drives people insane most of the time. Most of the time, people's jobs drive them to a place that they would otherwise never have been in, right? Places of stress, places of anxiety, places of worry. Oh, no. <clears throat> Are we going to make rent this month? Are we going to be able to buy all the things we like at the grocery store this month? Oh, no, I might be late on my car payment. We have to cancel Netflix for the month. All m- moments of worry. Or if you're a guy like me who's about to be, well, not about to be, but my next next year I won't have insurance. And now I have to worry. Oh, no, I need insurance. What if I what if I can't get a tooth pulled? What if my asshole hurts and I have no one to look at it? Oh no. I need insurance, but these are real things. These are things that happen to us as Americans because we're so worried about the next paycheck. We're so worried about the next uh bill cycle. You know, I got credit cards, I got this, I, you know, I bought a couch, I leased a couch, you know, I'm on a payment plan for a pair of socks, I need to work, and it drives people to a place where they normally would not want to be, most people don't want to be in these places of suspended anxiety, these, these, uh, these thoughts that just don't stop penetrating, you lay at the ceiling, 
you lay in your bed and stare at the ceiling at night saying, God, am I going to Am I going to have any money this month? Am I going to be okay at the end of this month? Will I have to dip into my savings, which I've already done too often? These are things that we think about so often. I don't know that other countries are so preoccupied with these problems, right? And it's all drawn from our culture. Our culture as Americans is to go a 1,000 miles an hour as often as we can, uh, you know, in everything, in everything, we we work to party, uh, we work to live, and we have a holiday commemorating that. That's how. That's the fucked up thing. All those feelings of of uh, poor self worth based on what we make monetarily, based on our financial situation. All those awful feelings can be put on hold on uh, September the 5th. On September the 5th, just know that your government is looking out for you. They're saying, hey, we appreciate you. Have a day off. But this day off is going to be a lot different than the other ones. It's going to be called Labor Day. And it's going to show you guys that we care about your hard work. We do. We, we are so privileged to have control over a group of citizens like yourselves, people who are willing to stay blissfully ignorant about how hard we're fucking your tight little assholes day in and day out, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 hours a week, more, more, keep working, all until September the 5th, September the 5th, does anybody look at Labor Day, there's so many holidays that people don't even acknowledge as anything, right, like I didn't even know that Labor Day was an actual it was actually about people who work. And I've been alive for 25 years. I didn't know that it was a holiday solely based on the commemoration of working. Now, I wonder, does that include labor across the board? Right? Because what about moms, single moms or parents in general? Right? What about caretakers and guardians and all that? They are working very hard, and they don't get the day off from that, right? They got to keep taking care of their kids. You don't get the day off from that. What about drug dealers? Drug dealers, they don't get the day off. on. In fact, they're probably very busy on Labor Day, very busy on Labor Day. Holiday weekend, they have to, they got to, you know, batten down the hatches and get ready. Get ready, because they're going to get a lot of orders in. It's Labor Day. Drug sales are through the roof. It's also considered the last day of summer. Not by the the solstice or the equinox, whatever the fuck it is. But it is historically known as the last day of the summertime. Uh, which is depressing in and of itself, right? I mean, everyone loves the summer, you know. I mean, it, but this is for people who live in a place with four seasons. If you live somewhere where it's always cold or it's always hot, then you know it's just it's it's no it doesn't have that same uh, significance. Or maybe it does. You know, I'm sure it gets cooler in Arizona in the fall, but it doesn't matter. Right, it doesn't matter because it's uh, it's meant to signify the uh, the ushering in of one of the more stressful times in America. Right, I think that's what they do with a lot of these holidays. It's just a way to. I'm talking about these like kind of dumber holidays, right? The holidays that we get days off, kind of for no reason. You know, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Memorial Day, 
they're all kind of just there to soften, soften the blow of what's actually coming, right? Memorial Day is the beginning of the summer, so, uh, you know, that's when everyone's going to the beach, everyone's having cookouts on Memorial Day, and the summertime, notoriously, is a time where you feel, if you're not out doing something, if you're not out having fun in the sun, or planning a vacation, or walking around with minimal clothing on, you feel like you're not taking advantage of it. You feel like you're just a fuck. You're like, ah, oh, I don't, you know, I didn't do anything today. I, didn't, I only went to the beach six times this week. What the fuck? I always go, I need to be outside throwing a, drunkenly throwing a frisbee at my friend and, uh, and, and hopefully hitting children in the head with it. That's what I need to be doing. I need to be quietly looking at uh, women wearing bikinis and mentioning uh, inappropriate things about them to my friends every day while I'm in the bag, smoking, drinking, on the beach, fucking the whole nine, looking at people who uh, are hotter than me, looking at them and saying, wow, look at that. You know, that's what the summer's for. And in a way, it can be, you know, for some people it can be a stressful time uh, if, you're, if that's not your thing, if you prefer the cold or, or some other fucking whatever. But Memorial Day is a time where it's like, all right, here's the beginning. We're going to soften you up. And then, boom, the kids are out of school, and they want to go here. We're going to Six Flags and Canopy Lake Park, and we're going to travel. We're going to do this, and then we got to go to the beach every day, and we got to have cookouts, and the kids' friends are going to come over, and they're going to sleep over. They're going to be loud in the basement. So I, we can't fuck. Me and, the, me and the missus can't fuck because the kids are in the basement with all their friends screaming and yelling, getting popsicle juice all over the fucking floor. So i got to go down there and clean that shit. They're going to be half, half uh, drank. Coca-Cola cans all over the place is going to be a mess, and I got to take care of that. And then in the morning, I got to mow the lawn, then I got to go paint the house, and then I got to come home. I got to grill because that's all you do in the summertime. You grill, and then you got to figure out you got to have a date night with the missus at some point and go somewhere near the beach on the water, and then maybe, just maybe, you can fuck. Maybe, but you're going to come home, and your kids will be fucking. Your slut daughter will be in your living room blowing a guy, and then you're going to walk in just as she's mounting him. You're going to walk in just as you're, she's mounting him, and you're going to say, damn, my daughter's a slut, but she's got a fat ass, and your wife's going to go, God, what the fuck's wrong with you? And then you're going to have a big orgy. You and your, and your daughter and your wife and the boyfriend, uh, you're going to have a big orgy in the house, and it's going to be strange, but it'll be the summertime. It's the summertime. This is a time where you can have familial orgies. This is a time where you can live out your wildest fantasies, but for some people, for some people, it's too much. For some people, it is, it's not exactly, uh, you know, it's not their cup of tea, and it can be stressful for them. Some people don't like the summer. You know, I look at Labor Day that way. I look at Labor Day that way. I look at, uh... There we go, another motorcycle. Um, I'm just going to wait. I'm not going to go off on him. Ah! No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Labor Day is like one of those days. It's the end of the summer, and we're here to ease you in to the next phase of this year, the last phase, the last quarter of the year. Arguably, unarguably, fuck arguably, unarguably the most stressed you will find people in this country, right? The most stressed you will find. And Labor Day, again, just not to keep harping on that, it's like we're going to give you this day off, but just know that to keep up with all the shit, all the money you're going to be spending, get to laboring. Get to laboring. Today is your day off. And you're going to get some days off, Thanksgiving and Christmas, if you work in the right industry. If you don't, if you don't, like me, you will be working. You will be at work on Christmas, which is what I would prefer. Realistically, 
I would prefer to be at work speaking to strangers on Christmas as opposed to doing the same bullshit traditions <clears throat> that everybody's been doing, <clears throat> that everyone's been doing, and that everyone uh, is accustomed to, not only in my house, but in everyone's house, you know? And, and I have a deep, deep hatred, a deep content for the time period that's coming up. Once Halloween is over, I'm just so, I become a different person. I become a person who is just not, it's funny because last year, I didn't feel this way. Last year, I felt, uh, you know, kind of good about, <clears throat> about Christmas and the holidays and the whole thing. But uh, I was in a relationship, you know, now that I'm not. <clears throat> Jesus, I'm sorry, guys. I keep clearing my throat. I can't help it. I got to stop drinking coffee during these things. It fucks with me. I get the hiccups. It's so strange. I don't know why. I never, when I drink coffee at, at any other point in the day, any other point in time, I'm, uh, I'm good. I don't have hiccups. I can talk normally. I think it's because, um, you know, I'm actually trying to do something here. And anytime that happens, something's got to fuck up. Just slightly. Just slightly. But last year, <clears throat> and even the year before that, I didn't mind Christmas too much. Maybe the year before that. But now that I'm kind of left to my own devices, I would prefer to not celebrate Christmas in, in any capacity at all. I would much rather spend that day uh, getting intoxicated to the point where I don't even know how to spell Christmas. I want to get to the point on Christmas where people look at me and say, get that fucking abomination away from me. Get that, per get that man out of my sight. Look at him. Look how disheveled that man is. Christmas should be a time where you're at your lowest. Right? Christmas... <clears throat> Christmas should be a time where you you lose all regard for your life and others. You lose whatever self-respect you have, whatever respect in general you have for people. That should be the... Everyone looks at New Year's as the day to while out. New Year's, your birthday. Those are the days where you go crazy. You go nuts. You celebrate hard. And that's where you're supposed to be a degenerate. And you get an excuse. Oh, it's New Year's. It's my birthday. But if you're an asshole on Christmas, you're dedicated. You are dedicated to the idea. You know, it's, it's a specific... To pick Christmas to be an asshole on, you have, uh, you're doing it on purpose, right? Almost. You're almost doing it on purpose. You know, it's one thing to not like a holiday, but if you're going to go out of your way to be a person that people actively don't want to be around on Christmas, you're doing a good job in my book. You are. You're doing great. But realistically, guys, I, uh, I hate the time of year that's coming. I really do. I love Halloween. I like the vibe of Halloween this year. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't, I don't know if I necessarily co-sign dressing up. Maybe I'll do it again. Maybe. Uh, you know, but there's some people go overboard. People who go overboard with holidays in general, it's, 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 it's annoying, right? It is very annoying to go to somebody's house on, uh, you know, December 1st, and there's Christmas music playing, and... The TV has a Christmas story just on repeat for the entire month. Every year, man. Every year. How do people not get sick of that shit? How do people not? I'm fortunate where my family, I, I only celebrate holidays with my immediate family. You know, so we already know everything that's going on in each other's lives. We sit there, we make small talk. Sometimes it's fun. Depends what kind of mood I. Depends what kind of mood everybody's in. But uh, you know, it's it's very 
minimal in my family what we do for Christmas. But going, I used to be jealous of the families that would have the big, big things together, and all the cousins get fucked up, or they go out and they get they get high and they come back, and the families are a lot of fun that way. <laughs> I used to be jealous of that, but now that I'm an adult and I'm a lot more realistic about these holidays and these situations, I am glad that it is that my holidays are spent very tight knit with my close family, mom, dad, brother, grandmother, uh, sister, nieces. That's it. You know, that's really all I need. My cousins take them or leave them realistically, you know, realistically take them or leave them. They don't even know that I do the show. I didn't tell them, you know, I didn't tell them. I did. I didn't tell them on purpose, you know, and I haven't seen them in a while. So which means the next time I see them, they're going to want to catch up. They're going to want to talk about a bunch of stupid shit that I would personally uh, like to avoid. I wouldn't mind not being present for any holidays, you know, that would be good. The best way to celebrate a holiday, even the ones you like, is to go somewhere. Go somewhere and do something different, you know? Go somewhere and stop pretending that the Christmas story is the best fucking piece of cinema since Citizen Kane, okay? Enough. Every year, you laugh at the same part. You laugh at the same jokes. The dad gets the fucking... The, the the lady leg lamp that breaks and he tapes it up and oh, oh, oh how funny the kid gets his tongue stuck to the pole let's keep this how about on veterans day we just have world war ii in color vietnam in color desert storm the korean war every war that america's been in on memorial day and on veterans day just put that on tv on repeat do that. Have have uh, eighteen year old Marines that were sent to Vietnam to go kill people for no reason. Have an endless loop of interviews of these gentlemen. Have them have their blank thousand yard stares just penetrate your soul as you drink that Coors Light on your boat on Memorial Day. How about we do that? Why is why is there's only two holidays that they do that shit. I guess they do it for Valentine's Day, too. But I was thinking Halloween and Christmas. And Halloween, at least you get different movies, right? At least there's different... There's different... You could watch horror as well as Halloween movies. Like, they're two different things. And I get... You know, that's... that's At least there's a little variety, right? Nobody's making Christmas movies anymore. They just aren't. There's only a couple movies that people make anymore. But... People definitely aren't making Christmas, unless you're watching Hallmark or Lifetime or some TV fucking hack bullshit movie, then that's one thing. And people aren't going to watch it anyway, guys. They're not going to watch it anyway. Same thing with Halloween. Everyone's going to watch Halloween. They're going to watch Friday the 13th. They're going to watch specific things. But again, Halloween, there's more. There's more to pick from. Christmas, there's that fucking stupid... There's that stupid claymation with Frosty the Snowman and the little drummer boy that they play every year. There's that, and then there's the fucking Christmas story. And that's all That's all there is. That's all there is. And other holidays should start, you know, we should have on, uh, you know, on the 4th of July, since we already don't give a fuck about the veterans or whoever that uh, suffer from PTSD, and we light off fireworks. Since we already don't care about them, why don't we just show uh, just images of war all day, right? Why don't we just put on, let's put on the Patriot. How about that? For the 4th of July, we'll put on the Patriot 24 hours. 24 hours on the 4th of July, it'll be the Patriot, right? The movie with Mel Gibson. The Jew-hating son of a bitch. Why don't we just do that? Why is Christmas the only day, the only holiday, where we have to be succumb to this one stupid fucking movie? It is a stupid fucking movie, guys. Anybody that watches a Christmas story at any point in the year, even on Christmas, 
you probably have an IQ of under 10. And that's most of my extended family. And I, I can't stand it. I, I greatly dislike Christmas, even in New York City. And that's where Christmas is supposed to be the thing. It's supposed to thrive. Rockefeller Center. And the big tree. Look at the big tree. Isn't that nice? Look at all that. And they leave it up for another week after. It's just, it's nothing that I'm interested in, guys. I'm really not. I mean, it would be, going to New York for Christmas would be nice. You know, it'd be better than the, it would only be nice because it would be different, right? People get so attached to doing their holidays the same way, and it is, to me, it's just, it, it diminishes the special aspect of what a holiday is supposed to be, I guess, right? Because we don't really know what a holiday is supposed to be, right? Realistically, I mean, there's religious holidays. Christmas is a religious holiday. People forget that because everybody celebrates it. It, is, it, it started as a religious holiday, but it has become, just like all the other ones, a marketing tool. A marketing tool, right? Just a reason for you to spend money in some capacity on food, on booze, on presents, on travel, on anything. You know, it's, it would be interesting if every holiday was just abolished. Wouldn't that be interesting? How would people get through the year? People, I think it helps people get through the year realistically, right? Because there's almost a holiday every month. And I've already gone over that, but they, it's, it, they are literally people who still look at holidays as a day for, oh, it's a day for family. We're all good. And I mean, it is for a lot of people, right? There's people whose, whose kids live far away and Christmas is a time that they can use to get together and, because it's a notoriously a time where everybody gets time off from work and yada, yada, yada. I get it. It's just dumb that we need a day designated to spend time with your family. Here's a day. We got a bunch of days for you, right? There's 365 days a year, sometimes more. We need to designate so many days throughout the year for you to spend t- to motivate you to spend time with your family which is why I go against the grain I spend time with my family when I fucking decide I don't say well it's labor day let's go to the beach this is the last time we could go to the beach it's halloween let's Let's eat pizza and give out candy together as a family. Let's take pictures. Let's, no. Let's just hang out whenever. Hey, what are you doing this weekend, brother? Oh, I'm not doing anything. Cool. Let's meet up. What are mom and dad doing? I don't know. Probably nothing. Let's all hang out. What about that? Right? What about that? I get it. I get it. But it's just... It is a cop-out. It is a cop-out for uh, to show f- familial love, right? People don't see their families all year, and then they come back for what? For their birthday, for Christmas, for, the ho- for a holiday, for something, right? They use that. You look at the calendar, you're like, oh, you know what? I don't have... I don't have enough time, but oh wow, Thanksgiving, I'll come by for Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, I'll come by, I'll stay the week, we'll have a good time, right? That's the only, and you know, it's, it's built into our culture. It's the time where we have days off from work, where we can get days off from work. So I understand it's all built around each other, but people hold illusions. People uh, who would rather be ignorant to, to what things are, they just, they hold, I was having a conversation with a a friend of mine and he was talking about how some of the smartest people are, they're very cynical. They're very, uh, maybe not negative, but they're, they're cynical. You know, that's, that's the word he used. They're just cynical. They, they see things for what they are. 
They don't hold any illusions about stuff. You know, they don't they don't try to 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 take things for what we we've what we've been told about them. Right? We kind of some people like to look past the curtain and say, "Hmm, this is this isn't exactly what everyone's been telling me it was." You know, this isn't exactly what everyone believes, you know, and uh, and it shouldn't be. I mean, everything we think we know, there's probably something hiding behind it, guys. Like, I'm drinking this coffee, right? And it's good, right? It's, it's kind of cold now. I'm not a fan of, of coffee that was once hot and sat there and got cool. But this coffee was probably uh, picked by a person in a, uh, you know, in an impoverished part of a country, and they need some kind of way to make a living. So a big corporation or a big wig suit-wearing, environment-destroying, life-saving businessman came in, bought a plot of land that they grow coffee beans on in Costa Rica and uh, got a bunch of locals who need a way to live. They need a way to live, but they don't need it to be too great. If we start them off real, if we, it's just like a bird that was born in a cage doesn't know that it isn't free. So those Costa Rican farmers who break their backs and sweat in the sun, picking beans for very, very little money because that's the money that they were promised ahead of time and it sounded good to them, when in actuality they're getting greatly underpaid. They're out there picking these beans so that an asshole like me can uh, put it into my little, my little uh, coffee maker on my little stove in my air conditioned apartment in a nice little nice little town and I can drink it and I could do my little podcast. I could sit here and do my little podcast and I can uh, I can choose how to live my life. I can I have the freedom of choice where I live. The where I was born, I can do more or less whatever the fuck I want. Whereas the guy that made me this coffee, the group of people that went ahead and put their hands on the beans and ground them down and did the whole thing, they are struggling to live, and they're happy with it. Not all of them. Not all of them. But they are very happy. Some of them are happy with the fact that they just have a way to live, you know? They do, but I hold no illusions about that. I know that these guys are breaking their backs in the hot sun just for some asshole like me to drink it. You know, same thing with Starbucks, right? Same thing. These these craft coffee companies are a trip, right? These, I mean, Starbucks is the one that made it a thing. You know, Starbucks is very cult-like. It's very much, you go to Starbucks or you ain't shit. You go to Starbucks, you got to get a venti, double extra, you got to have some ridiculously long diatribe of a fucking coffee order, and they're the ones who made it mainstream and cool, but what about those beans that you get from Ethiopia, that some woman whose ribs have been showing for the past 10 days, and she's been out there working, working hard for her three children, who she can feed, she can, she can bring stuff for them to eat, but she can't eat. She can't do it, you know? She can't. And they're charging you so much money for that. Like, when you consider the the cost of labor and the actual product that you're ingesting, there's a good chance that they're making an exponential amount on a cup of coffee. Even if you just got a black cup of coffee, it probably is a fraction of a cent to a corporation like Starbucks, and you're paying 450 for it, right? 
You got to... This is what I'm saying, guys. You can't hold these illusions. That's what this show is for. That's what this show is for. For some people to, to, to kind of, you know, I'm here to enlighten you. I'm here to show you that not things aren't what they seem. Not everything is what they seem, guys. You know? And holidays are one of the biggest ones. And I, I do want to... I do want to take a break from the holiday talk in general because as we get closer to that season, I, of course, uh, it does become a part of what I talk about on here because I just have a great disdain for bullshit. And holidays are stupid fucking bullshit stories. They are, all of them. Your birthday, your birthday that you love so much, if you're celebrating a birthday sometime soon, it's bullshit. It's fucking dumb, okay? Why do you need to celebrate the day you were pushed out of your mother? Really? You need to celebrate that? You need to... The, the, so, an accident, essentially, is what you're celebrating. You're celebrating something that, when we're talking about statistics, it shouldn't have happened, right? Statistically speaking, the fact that you're born is so incredibly... Uh, improbable that the f- I, and and maybe that is an argument to celebrate it right maybe that's an argument to celebrate that maybe the first time right maybe the first time but once you get to a certain point you're just using it as an excuse to act like a fucking child right i think as a child children should have birthday parties sure but once you get to a certain point Enough. Just enough. Just say you want to go out and get hammered. You know, you go out and get hammered and act a fool on any day. Why on on your birthday are you going to ramp it up in any capacity? I don't know. I don't know, guys. It's just, it's stupid. It's stupid to me. It's stupid to me that every year you celebrate an accident. And maybe at first you needed to get used to it. You needed to understand that, hey, you're here. This is a life. But the more experiences you have, who the fuck is celebrating? Who's celebrating? Who's celebrating the fact that, uh, you know, we, we live in the way that we do? I don't know. Maybe some people are. I know I do sometimes. You just can't hold illusions about it. You just can't hold the illusions about it. That's... That's going to be the name of today's episode. No illusions. So, some of you may know of a little drug called Adderall. Adderall, the most abused drug in the United States uh, because cocaine is too tainted. Cocaine is, is not the drug that people like anymore. It's not the white the rich white guy drug anymore. Now it's Adderall. Now you can get prescribed, FDA-approved cocaina in the form of a little tablet that says Adderall. And what happens is, or what's been happening, is uh, doctors are now dialing back and realizing that maybe they're giving out a little bit too much of this shit. Right, they're maybe giving out maybe too much, and it's and it's so most people that take Adderall are college students or they're young adults um, who work often and they need a way to stay focused. They need a way to bing, 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 bing. So uh, you know, and it's funny because those are most people who use it, but it's an ADHD medication, right? An ADHD, uh, you know, something that helps people who have that particular uh, problem, focusing and whatever else. But most people who use it are college students or or people who work very often. Uh, it literally has replaced cocaine. It has replaced cocaine because of how wide, how easy it is to get. I can ask anyone for Adderall. I did. I took Adderall once and didn't do anything. It might have been small. It might have been, you know, whatever. But I, uh, you know, it didn't do shit to me. 
I didn't feel any more focused. Maybe I have ADHD. That's probably what it is. That's what I was told. I told somebody. I'm like, I did it. It didn't do anything to me. And they're like, ah, maybe you have ADHD. That's probably what it is. But um, doctors are starting to realize, hey, there's a lot of this shit out there. You know, there's a lot of this stuff out there. A lot of people are getting their hands on it. A lot of kids are taking it. Right? We give a lot of kids. Again, FDA approved. FDA approved. Give the kids that drug. Give them that one. Give them that drug. Just don't let them smoke cigarettes. Don't let the kids get their hands on the new parts or the jewels. Don't let them touch those. Adderall, shove it down their throats because they're fucking annoying if not. They don't learn if they don't take drugs. Do you understand that? Isn't that, isn't that worrying to anybody? Doesn't that worry people that kids are so not enthused by the things that we're teaching them that we need to give them drugs to pay attention? Right? Isn't it like Doug Stanhope had a great bit about this where people, they, they're doing these stupid, boring tasks, whether it's for work or for school or whatever the fuck it is, And they can't focus. They can't focus. Huh, really? Maybe because it's fucking boring and stupid and meaningless and yada, 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 yada. Maybe it's because you're not using your body in any any circumstance. You're just sitting there looking at a screen and you're in an Excel file. That's what you do. And that's fine. But you can't look at a person that's doing that, at a person that's doing that, and they say, ah, man, I just can't focus. And you look at them and go, hmm, I, <laughs> you need this little pill. You probably just have ADHD. We all have it. Do, are there people who don't have ADHD? Especially nowadays. I feel like the, the, the rampant use of social media, the way social media is structured now, how people have very short attention spans. You can go on TikTok or or the, all the social media kind of took TikTok's model where they have the quick videos. Quick, quick, quick. You scroll, there's a new one. You scroll, there's a new one. That probably contributes to ADHD. People don't want to look at that. Where's the FDA there, right? I know it's food and drug, but where's the governing body there, right? That could also be a thing. Um, maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I would think that the, the uh, in our free time, we're not doing things that require us to pay attention, to be focused. You know, I mean, some of the best ways to do that is to learn something new, right? Which is something people are very averse to. Oh, God, learn something. I'm going to suck. Of course, you're going to suck. You're new at it, you know? But it's, it's uh, you know, learning something that takes time to get good at. And I don't mean a video game, right? A video game is just another uh, ADHD enhancer, another ADHD fucking catalyst. Because especially if you play like a, a shooter, a modern warfare, like it's instant, bing, 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 bing. It's instant stuff. So you... <clears throat> You are, uh, it's, it's, there's no difference between that and social media. I mean, maybe learning an instrument or doing a martial art or a new sport or something that requires you to learn glass blowing. I don't know. Maybe that would help with your ADHD as opposed to, so now all these doctors who, isn't it funny how so many years after forcing certain types of medication on people, they look back and they go, huh, maybe that wasn't good. Maybe we accepted the first peer-reviewed study. We all accepted it. The first one that gave us an answer that we were looking for. And then we were able to just make a ton of money on it. Hmm. Maybe that's what it was. And now we have a large swath of the population who can't function without taking a little blue a little blue something in the morning. They can't function. Huh. Maybe maybe we should look into this. <gasps> we were wrong? Pfft. 
Who knew? Who knew? Who knew we were giving out too much? You know? It's just like the opioid shit. You know, the opioid crisis. You want to call it a crisis. They attach crisis to, to these uh, large masses of unfortunate things that happen, you know? They attach that word to it. When I mean, can it be a crisis if it was induced by a group of people on a wide scale? You know? I mean, I don't feel bad. I really don't. I don't feel bad for the doctors or the people that were diagnosed. With AD. I, I read that in America, there is no protocol for people who have ADHD. If you have ADHD, the one fix-all is... Adderall. That's it. Adderall, some, the, the other one, I forget the name of it, but there's two of them. That's it. You get one, you, you get one, or you get both, or you get whatever. And that's it, right? There's no, uh, there, there's not enough time and there's not enough uh, mental health care facilities to go around that'll help people work through some of these things. People look at uh, people look at other people who think outside the box or think differently than them as outsiders, right? We need this, this person. There's something wrong with this person. Why? Why is there something wrong with that person? Why aren't they? Are they different than you or me? The, their chemical makeup, right? We're all made of the same shit. We got the same brains, you know, we think about different things, but we have the same brains. Everyone shares the same feelings of sometimes inadequacy or anxiety or trouble focusing. Everyone feels these things. And sure, people have different degrees, and there are such things as, as uh, you know, I'm not one to say that mental illness doesn't exist. It, of course, exists in, in plenty of different facets and plenty of different uh, levels, right? You can be a little depressed, seasonally depressed, or you could be on the verge of killing yourself every day. Don't get me wrong. Those, are, I mean, but when, when you look at the lack of mental health care that is available in this country, the lack of funding that that type of shit gets, then there's no wonder that there's guys going into public places and killing people, Right? There's no wonder that the only that when the only treatment that we have for people whose brains function a little differently than ours is to alienate them by giving them a, a set of letters to define their lives by and then say, here, take this magic capsule. And if you run out, you need to get more. And then one day the guy says, you know what? I'm not going to take him today. I'm not going to take him today. And they go down a rabbit hole and they're like, whoa, I forgot what it was like to be like this. And then they let all their feelings bubble and boil over and they go out and they do something terrible, right? It doesn't always necessarily need to be a shooting, but they go out and they commit some other kind of crime or they hurt somebody that they otherwise would have liked because their mind is usually in a drug-induced uh, sense of ignorance, a drug-induced sense of blissful ignorance that they have been bred to believe is the way to, to live from, in, from fucking conception to now, from, from their diagnosis of whatever fucking collection of letters that the doctor told them about to now. And just to clarify, guys, I don't disagree with the with these diagnoses, diagnoses. You know, what I do disagree with is alienating the people. Alienating people in a way. I mean, everybody has some form of these things. Everybody talks to themselves. Everybody has a bipolar fucking uh, you know, another half to them that they're like, oh, you know, they go back and forth with it. And everybody has that shit. Everybody has some sense of paranoia, some sense of multiple personality fucking disorder, depression, anxiety, ADHD, ADD, ABC. When everybody has these fucking things, 
But we as a society are taught not to work our way through, but to band-aid. Here's a band-aid. Turn the AC up. That's a phrase we use very often. Turn the air conditioner up. You know? And that's what it is. That's what it is here. And there are people that do need to be on medication. Don't get me wrong. There's people with severe mental illness who do need to be on medication. But, you know, uh, Mike, who is an accountant and, uh, you know, can't get any pussy or is having a tough time getting laid, that guy doesn't need drugs. Not the drugs that they're giving away at the doctor. You know, that guy doesn't need to be paying money for a psychiatrist. It would be nice if there was, if we lived in a society or a culture where you come up acknowledging your feelings as a human, not pushing them down, right? Not saying, oh, no, I I shouldn't want to, to, uh, as a woman, right? I shouldn't want to have sex, right? Again, Doug Stanhope, brilliant, another part of his bit. It's like, maybe you just like fucking. That's what you do it for. Maybe that's what it is. Women are so worried to be looked at as a whore. You know, men are worried to be looked at as vulnerable when they, when they show uh, emotion and these type of things. I mean, that's real power. Real power is understanding the type of person you are and digging your heels in. Digging your heels in. Understanding who you are as a person and wearing it on your chest proudly. Showing everybody, hey... I like fucking, I like fucking, I like getting my hair pulled and my ass slapped, right, for hours on end. That's what I like, as a man or a woman, right? You know, as, you know, I like to do drugs and, and have wild nights out. That's what I like, right? You're not supposed to like that as a person, right? You're not you're supposed to get to work. You gotta get to work, It's just, there's so many feelings that we as humans have just decided are bad. You can't feel this way. You can't be bored at your boring job. Are you crazy? You can't be fucking bored. This is your job. This is your livelihood. Take your drugs and get to work. I would assume that back in the day when everybody was doing coke, it was probably a lot more fun. You know, because the government isn't involved. Well, I shouldn't say that. The government was very much involved in getting uh, cocaine to all the people here. But at least you felt like it was it was a little rebellious, right? When people were selling subprime mortgages in the 90s, snorting lines, people were stockbroken, you know? That was the Adderall. Fuck that. You got a line of that white... <laughs> Oh, yeah, get to work, baby. I don't know. It's just, it's strange. And now all the doctors want to come, oh, no, we we may have made a mistake. (laughs) As they drive away in their fucking McLarens and they go to their homes, one of their homes. They they have more than one. But this one in particular is a big estate. And you you know how they made that money? You know how they made that money? By giving away Adderall giving away Adderall. They're getting bonuses every year because the pharmaceutical companies, the medical industry, making a lot of money. The insurance, the wealth, it gets spread. That's what it is. You know, these hospitals, these state hospitals, these private hospitals that get all this money uh, for health care, right? People are dying and they're making millions of dollars on them. How do you think these doctors get so rich? It's by following the protocol. They tell us to give out the opiates. Give out the opiates. Keep doing it. Wow, I got a raise. I wonder why. Because the, the fucking hospital made a ton of money off this shit. You know? And we were supposed to look at doctors as a, as a fucking, ooh, these guys are legitimate. When every year there's a new drug that doctors look at and say, huh, maybe, and I get it. It's a science, right? And, and that's why it's a very uh, ethically scrutinized field, 
because it is a science, but it's a science on humans, right? We're, we're figuring out what works for what ailment. And we got a lot figured out, like very, you know, don't get me wrong. I very much trust in the, uh, in, in the medical advancements that we've made. We live in the best time when it comes to medicine. We, you know, we don't have to do fucked up shit uh, for, for menial things. We have a better understanding of biology and all this shit. But when it comes to these pharmaceutical companies pumping out this medication and have forcing doctors to get on board, then now we're, we're getting a little, uh, you know, a little hazy. It's necessary because there's a lot of medication that works, but we're getting a little hazy. We're getting a little strange because now the pharmaceutical companies, they're a business. They need to make money too. How are we going to make the most money? Convince people that they need these drugs. Convince people that they need them. Make them addict. Don't let them chew. Don't let their addiction brew on their own. Make them think that they need to be addicted in order to help themselves. What a masterful idea. How fucking masterful is that? They're literally telling everybody, you need this. You need this. If you don't need this, you're going to be sad. Or if you don't use this, you're going to be sad. You're going to be less productive. If you don't use this, your dick won't work. If you don't use this, this won't help. If you don't, you need it. You need it. Come on. Just go to the doctor and ask about it. Ask your doctor about it. Your doctor, your trusted doctor, ask him about it. And he's going to say yes. He or she's going to say yes nine times out of ten, as long as your heart's okay for it. And if it's not, then we got something else we can give you to regulate your heart. And then we'll give you this. And now you'll be even better. Things will just be better. They will be, guys. And what masterful marketing, what a masterful fucking plan those companies have. They really do. I mean, you can't deny the power behind these pharmaceutical companies and their ability to make it, to keep us at ease, right? Their ability to keep us ignorant, to keep us in the dark, uh, not worrying about the after effects of these things, not worrying about the kidney damage and the liver failure and all this shit that can arise from taking too much medicine. Right, taking these medicines that fuck you up bad, and uh, you know, all I'm saying is maybe sometimes it could be a little better when it comes to the mental health issues. And this isn't a one size fits all thing, but it could be better to maybe sit and 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 figure out a way to operate your life based on the brain you are given. Maybe, you know, maybe don't use those bullshit chemicals that they're giving you. Use the ones that, you know, we were given already, right? Weed, mushrooms. Use the fun shit. Fuck the doctors. Fuck what the doctors say. <laughs> Even though I just said I totally believe in them. No, it's, it is obviously, you know. Not saying that weed's for everybody, not saying mushrooms for, for everybody. First, you should probably figure out the type of person you are, uh, figure out how your brain works. And if Adderall works for you, great. That's great. You should probably keep taking it if it works for you. But if you stop taking these things and you're like, hey, I can function, I can function without it, then throw them motherfuckers in the trash. Stop getting them. You know, you don't need them. Some people do need them. Some people don't. Some people wouldn't have known that they needed them, quote unquote, if they never went and spoke to a psychiatrist in the first place. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't go speak to a psychiatrist, but just understand that if that door never gets opened, if you got this far, then maybe you could keep going. I'm not sure. Anyway, guys, I think uh, that's enough for today. It's Labor Day. I don't, I don't expect anybody to actually be listening to this on Labor Day. Um, but enjoy. Enjoy it. 
because, like I said, soon every day is going to be intense Labor Day, real Labor Day, real Labor Day. It should be anti-Labor Day if it's going to be a day off. You know, we're celebrating everybody that works. That's everybody, is it not? Do homeless people not get to celebrate Labor Day? What about them? That was another group that I said. People that don't work. Do they not get the day off from not working? They should have to work. People who don't work should have to work. Just for the day. Just for the day. I'm on unemployment. Well, it's Labor Day. Get to work. Go flip a patty. Go sweep a floor. Go do something. Uh, As far as dates go, guys, I got uh, Broadway Comedy Club on Saturday. This Saturday coming, September 10th. I'm doing two shows, late shows, 10 and 11 p.m. Should be a lot of fun. And uh, stay tuned for the content from the Portland, Maine Comedy Festival. Me and Raph are going to be working tirelessly this week to hopefully get you something by this week. Um, We're going to have stuff on Instagram. We're going to have stuff on YouTube. We're going to have plenty of stuff. There's going to be kind of a little series I'm working on. Um, from those three, three or four days, uh, and there'll be some extra stuff too. So stay tuned to that. If you don't follow me on the, on Instagram, that's where a lot of it's going to be going down. We're going to be putting promo videos out. Um, and that's the deal, motherfuckers. I'll talk to y'all on Thursday. Peace. Oh, me again. Follow the show, subscribe on the YouTube, buy me a coffee, use the links. Bye-bye.